Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the Football Foundation's Grass Pitch webinar, where we'll cover everything from how to access funding through to the renovation work you'll need to keep your pitches in the best possible condition as grassroots football starts up again. My name is Mark Lydiard. I'm a facilities project manager at VFA, and I'll be hosting the webinar this evening. Before I make the introductions, there are a few housekeeping rules I'd like to make you aware of. This evening's webinar will be recorded and by attending, you are giving your consent for the recording to take place. No attendees images can be seen other than the presenters and the question and answer panelists. Right now, let me move on to make a few introductions. I'm joined this evening by Lee Ryder, who is a senior, senior delivery manager at the Football Foundation, Chris Smith, who is a program manager at the Football Foundation and the lead for Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund, and Tom Rowley, who is the key account manager for football at the Grounds Management Association, who we all work closely with. Lee will take us through the main presentation this evening before we head into a question and answer session with Chris and Tom. Before we start the presentation, we're really keen to gather your feedback and questions. So please use the chat function to type them in and some of the panelists uh, will be able to reply as we go along in terms of those questions. We will aim to also make sure that we distribute uh, all of the questions and the answers to those questions uh, after the webinar to you, along with some other documentation I'll mention later. Um, I'll now hand over to Lee, who will take you through the presentation. Over to you, Lee. Thank you, Mark. I'll just share my screen. Yeah, can we can see it. it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Thank you, Mark, and good evening to everybody. Uh, thank you for attending, um, particularly as we have a, an England game kicking off and around uh, 45 minutes, so, so I won't delay. Uh, as, as Mark mentioned, uh, my name is Lee Ryder and I am the, the Senior Delivery Manager for the Midlands and Southwest region. I cover the Southwest area, my colleague Keely Brown covers the West Mids and Andy Wadsworth covers the East Mid, Mid, Mids area. So why are you here? Everyone here is potentially eligible to apply for funding to improve your grass football pitches if they meet the criteria. I'm going to take you through the funding available, where this funding comes from, what you can use the funding for, what is re required from you and your club, how we will support you and how you can apply. And as Mark mentioned, there will be a Q&A at the end uh, and please post your questions in, in the chat function and I know Chris and, and colleagues will be um, typing away to, to answer as many as they can. So the new funding for grass pitches is coming from the Football Foundation and we are the Premier League, the FA and the government's charity and we exist to improve grassroots football facilities across England. Now this could be goalpost replacements, grass pitch improvements, hence why we're here tonight. It could be for pavilions or it could be for the larger 3G pitches. Uh, the foundation has invested more than 710 million of the partners funding over the past 20 years into more than 17,000 projects. By improving local football facilities, we want to get more people involved in football, regardless of their background, age or ability. And that can include volunteers, such as yourself as groundsman, hence being here tonight. By unlocking the power of pitches, we can help transform the lives of players and strengthen communities across England. So if we move to look at uh, the current state of grass pitches in England, um, we're all aware of co cuts in local authority funding. This has led to a decline in the quality of grass pitches in England. And grassroots football clubs such as yourselves tell us that pitches are their biggest issue. With only one in three grassroots pitches being rated as good quality and only one in eight grassroots clubs are satisfied with the quality of their grass pitches. So I'm sure you can agree there is, there is some way to improve. And during the last full season, which was the 2018-19 season, 150,000 matches were postponed, which is, which is really tragic. And lots of kids are missing out and adults are missing out on football. So we are going to change this through a grass pitch revolution. 
we're going to see unprecedented investment in grass pitches by the funding partners by ourselves as the foundation. There is a new performance standard for monitoring football pitch quality. And we have a bold ambition to deliver 5,000 good pitches by 2024. And this forms part of an overall aim to have 20,000 quality grass pitches up and down the country in the next 10 years. And our players deserve this and hopefully that their football will improve as the pitches improve. So you can join our grass pitch revolution. We're offering a 10 year maintenance plan to improve your pitches. And for the first six years, we will provide grant funding. And this will provide up to 2,500 for every one of your 11 aside pitches in the first two years. And this tapers down over the six years. So years one to two is 100%. Years three to four is 66%. Years five and six is 33%. And then years seven to 10, you as the club would need to maintain that good standard. For smaller pitches, your 99s, you've got a £2,000 grant. And for a mini soccer pitch, which is your 5v5 and 7v7, there's a 1,500. And the same percentage applies across that six year period. The grants are available to employ contractors, purchase materials, and you can purchase a soil sampler, which can help you test your soil. There are separate grants available for pitch maintenance equipment and machinery. Uh, a maintenance plan based on the recommendations in your pitch power assessment report will help provide information. And we will touch on the, the pitch power app later in this presentation, so you're aware of what that is. And grants are available to improve grassroots community pitches. So this means if you are playing in this, the, the National League, step one to six, you are ineligible. So you cannot apply for this funding. But if you have pitches at your ground, those pitches may be eligible if they meet the, the other criteria. Uh, if you're a club and you're playing in the regional feeder league, this was pre previously known as step seven, you may be eligible as long as the predominant usage is for grassroots community teams. So the aim of the funding, as we mentioned, is to improve the quality of pitches. And we want to sustain that quality of the pitches over that 10 year period and beyond. This really does um, what we do want to change the grass pitch quality uh, forever. The Grounds Management Association, the GMA uh, for short, which, which I will use later in this presentation, has created a new standard for grass pitches. And you can see this on the right. So if you remember, two out of three pitches in England would fall into that bottom category of basic or poor, with only one in three attaining the good or advanced standard. The top of the triangle is missing uh, because that is more aligned to uh, your professionally managed uh, grounds, so, so not relevant for, for this presentation. I've already mentioned the minimum um, aim of 20,000 pitches being brought up to a good standard. And your pitch power assessment report will tell you what level your pitches are at. So what will it help pay for? Uh, you can receive a grant to pay for pitch maintenance contractor services to help you maintain your pitches. The 10 year maintenance plan will be determined by the GMA within your pitch power assessment report. The football foundation will cover 67% of the total cost for the first six years. And I outlined uh, the percentages over that six year period earlier. And the funding will help, help pay for the services of slitting, fertilizer, selective herbicide, scarification, aeration, or overseeding stroke top dressing. If you want to do the work yourself, uh, the grants can support the cost of materials. And again, your regional pitch advisor from the GMA will recommend the appropriate quantities and the product types required. And that will be specific to each pitch that you have a pitch power assessment report on. As you know, different pitches will, will require different works. And the grants can pay for grass seed and fertilizer, but in order for it to do, for, for your club to, to carry out the works yourself, you would need to have qualified personnel to carry out the works such as 
the GMA level one or an equivalent. And these courses are available to attend online. So are you eligible? So to be eligible, the number one criteria is to have a pitch power assessment report. And this will come after you have assessed your pitches through the pitch power app. And then the second criteria is, do you have the permission to do the work? So do you own the freehold of your site? Or do you have a lease for 10 years or more? Or you could have a license. If you don't have a freehold, the license or a lease, you would need to have the written permission from the landowner to carry out the works. And we can support you with a pro forma and a maintenance agreement to allow you to put that paperwork in place. So machinery and small grants are also available. So you could receive a separate grant for up to 75% of the total cost of any mach machinery required to improve your pitches. The machinery and equipment requirements will be determined by the regional pitch advisor from the GMA and will help, um, help you determine the specification. Secondhand machinery is eligible as long as you have a warranty with that uh, equipment and these warranties vary. You can purchase storage containers and you would need to ensure and safely secure the machinery and this will be a condition of the award from ourselves. So what can be achieved? Um, a number of pilots were ran and the one on the screen is West Cur Kirby United FC. 96 teams, so a, a very large club. They use 11 pitches across six different sites and a number of the pitches have received £1,800 um, for maintenance across that season. And from the 2017-18 season, they had 24% of their matches postponed. With the investment and the improvement to the pitches, 2018-19 season saw that reduced to 4%. So that, that's a significant uh, improvement um, just in one season. So if your pitches are receiving the high level of maintenance and are being maintained to that good standard, we would expect that, that reduction to be maintained and, and even bettered. So we will be working in partnership. Uh, we will help you identify the right work needed to improve your pitch or pitches. We are providing new tools to make it easy to manage the process, such as this streamlined application process that hopefully you will go through. We have the Pitch Power app. We will help you get started with 100% of funding for two years, and this is paid in advance. You will be responsible for providing pitch assessments two times per year per pitch that you request funding on. And this will be via the Pitch Power app. And you will need to fund the maintenance uh, plan to keep pitches at, at the good standard from year seven onwards, as I earlier alluded to. So pitch power. This is an online app and this allows you to input information yourself and this significantly reduces the time it takes to receive the report compared to the initial um, uh, pitch improvement uh, program that, that we ran in conjunction with the FA where you had to wait for a visit from a regional pitch advisor and then you had to wait for them to, to write the report. Um, it provides ongoing advice about how to improve your pitch and this can change as your, your pitch changes and it works via a combination of photographs and information being inputted so the site conditions, soil samples etc. It's free to download and use, and there are numerous instructional videos and, and information that you can find within the app itself. But please ensure you use pitch power on all the pitches you want funding for. And even if you don't have funding or you don't want funding for a pitch, you can still use this app to record the quality of your pitch and receive information moving forward. So the example here is Hyun Mong Sit. Uh, Jung Mun Sin from, from Tottenham, great to see him um, getting the pitch walk out and, and helping the, the, the ground staff over at the ground in London. Short video to show you what the Pitch Power app looks like. There is no sound, so apologies.
so hopefully that gives you um, a small insight to what the app will look like. You can run it on your iPad, your iPhone, so it is completely um, free to, to roam around your pitches as, as you're making your assessments. So the pitch power uh, report, you will need to submit your completed inspection of each of the pitches that you want to apply for funding or gain information on. The GMA will review the information and assess the quality of your pitches. You will receive an assessment report from your regional pitch advisor within 21 days of submitting your inspection. The report will, will provide practical recommendations of how you can improve the quality of your grass pitches. And remember, this report is your gateway to funding through, through this, this funding scheme. And there's a, um, this is what the report looks like on the right, which you will receive once you submit your, your inspection. So there is a separate Football Foundation groundkeeping community app. And this app is a free platform that helps connect you to expert grass pitch knowledge and support at the touch of the bottom. There is um, industry professionals and the GMA that can provide advice through this, this app. It's free to join. The app access ongoing advice and education about pitch maintenance. And you can also access peer-to-peer -peer advice from like-minded groundsmen. So it really does provide a, a well-balanced um, platform for, for groundsmen. You can also find out specific information for relevant times of the season. And the one that's been recently uploaded is around guidance for the, for the extension of the 2021 season, which I'm sure will cause a number of problems across a number of sites through the crossover between the cricket season and um, your pitches being used at the time when you would generally be doing your renovation. So the, the renovation period is, is usually May to June. So you'll need to be flexible around this. And there may only be a short period, if any, between the end of the 2021 season and the start of the 21-22 season. But I'm sure everyone agree that to get kids playing football again, you know, this, this will be worth it in the long run. But this doesn't mean operations can't take place. You can find guidance on alternative re renovation programs through a link when you receive this presentation and you can seek advice through the, the groundskeeping app. If you have any major capital projects such as drainage, uh, these should seriously be considered as they do require a lot of time to, in, um, to make, carry out the works, but also for those works to then bed in. And Tom is going to uh, run through some advice uh, after this presentation. So what's next? 10 point plan. So you will need to proceed with your application. You will need a pitch power assessment report. You will then need um, the ability to carry out the works. So you will need the freehold, the 10 year lease or license or the permission through the pro forma. You need to go to the Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund on the Football Foundation website. You will need to have your Pitch Power Assessment Report ID ready, and then you need to complete the online application form. The funding is offered on a first come, first served basis, so, so please don't, don't hang about to make your application. And you will find out if you're successful within two weeks for grants of less than 50k, or it take, could take up to four weeks for grants in excess of 50k if you have a high number of pitches on your site. You will need to tender and procure the works, and this is to seek best value and, and make the funding go as far as it can. And you will need to provide pitch power inspections twice a year through the full 10-year uh, maintenance plan that, that we're providing you with. You will then also need to complete a funding claim annually to the Football Foundation uh, to cover the six years worth of funding that, that you will receive. So to apply, you need to go to the Football Foundation website and click on the apply for funding uh, link. It will take you through to our grant application portal. You would need to register, which only takes a couple of minutes. You would then need to click on start the application process as highlighted on the screen. On the next page, you will then need to click on complete the application form link. You will need to find your pitch assessment report and make sure you have the, the report ID number available. 
And when you get to this page on the application form, you will click the grass pitch maintenance fund. And then you will need to enter in your pitch report ID. And that will then populate the majority of the application form for you, which will then save you time, um, which everyone will hopefully appreciate. And that's it in terms of the presentation. So Mark, back to you. Thank you very much, Lee. Uh, the chat has been very busy with some quite detailed questions uh, being asked. We'll, we'll try and uh, pick them up as we go through for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Um, so I'd like to invite Chris uh, Smith, who's the, the Programme Manager for Grass Pitches, and Tom Rowley, who's the Key Account Manager for Football. Uh, the majority of questions which have come through will probably fall on both of your laps uh, this evening. Um, Chris, uh, could, if we can get started, um, Lee mentioned in his presentation with regards to uh, a license agreement and a lease. Um, can you can you explain what's required for, for clubs who don't have a lease or, or a freehold or a license uh, on their pitches uh, in, in terms of how they can make an application? Yep. So if you don't have the freehold, a 10-year lease or a 10-year license, there is an agreement that you can use. Um, the agreement's been sent to county FAs and we'll also share the agreement um, with the comms that are sent out next week um, post these webinars. And in essence, what that agreement is, is a um, permission from the landowner to carry out the, the works recommended in your pitch power assessment report. Um, and once that's been signed by the landowner um, and the club, you can upload that as suitable security of tenure uh, within the application portal. Oh, okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for that, Chris. Just a, a couple of questions uh, around the, the use of, of, of pitch power. Um, previously, uh, clubs have had uh, access to obviously a GMA kind of report provided by the, the regional pitch advisor. Are they able to submit that uh, instead of, of, of pitch power? No, so we would need everybody to use pitch power uh, as a prerequisite to access and apply for the funding. Um, so yet yeah, the, the previous GMA reports um, wouldn't be um, suitable for this fund. So yeah, the, the message is basically um, use pitch power, um, submit your inspection uh, information, get your pitch power assessment report ID and use that in the application portal. And that ID uh, will then populate the application form for you based on the information in your pitch power assessment report. Right, okay, that's great. And the second one which really covers kind of pitch power is um, some clubs have already been using it and they've submitted the data uh, and do they need to use it again before they apply for funding? No, so if, if you've already used pitch power, great. And you've used it for all the pitches you maintain um, on your site or sites um, and all the pitches that you want funding for, then um, that's fine. You basically just need to use your report ID within the application form. If you haven't used pitch power for all of the pitches that you maintain or all the pitches that you want funding for, you will need to use it for all of those pitches um, again um, and resubmit the, the data um, and get a um, pitch power assessment report that covers all of the pitches on your site that you maintain or you want funding for. Right, okay, that's, that's really comprehensive, thank you. Um, Tom, obviously grassroots football is going to be starting kind of you know, soon in the next couple of weeks, uh, and, and we're almost moving into that end of season kind of period, in, you know, traditionally, you know, pre, pre the pandemic. Can you expand on, you know, the, the kind of the renovation and, and you know, what, what can be carried out if clubs are still playing on their pitches, you know, due to the season extension? Yeah, no worries. Um, yes, as, as Lee said, great news that we've got football coming back. Um, but it does uh, provide a bit of a challenge for those looking after pitches with the extension of the season. And there's more, again, as, as Lee said, there's more uh, advice and information on this on the, on the groundskeeping uh, hive. Um, so obviously, the potentially a very short turnaround between one season and the other. And with it falling bang in the middle of the summer, uh, does make the typical end of the season renovation period, a uh, slight challenge, but not, not insurmountable at all. I think the biggest uh, 
the biggest element will be being flexible. So planning ahead, working with contractors, and thinking about what tasks can be done in house by yourselves, and also working with your coaches and teams just to explain the, the challenges you might have and the timings of certain operations. Um, the, the biggest challenge is probably going to be around seeding. So traditionally, we would wait to the end of the season, but in this case, it will likely be too hot and dry for any seed to germinate and, and establish, particularly um, with most grassroots clubs don't have any access to, um, to adequate water. Um, so with that in mind, seeding now, so sort of late March and April, um, and or in September time, will give a much better chance for the seed to take and establish. And th there is obviously a risk of any new seed being kicked out during play. So making sure that the method of uh, application is um, via disc seed, drill seed, any, any type of seeder that, we, that will set the seed in the ground. So making sure it's set to its maximum depth, which will protect the seed, hopefully give it a chance to, uh, to establish a root which can hold in the ground and will ho hopefully help it uh, cope with any wear and tear uh, when sort of uh, play is, uh, is happening. Uh, come the end of the season, if there are any really bad areas such as goal miles that um, have suffered significant damage, then you may need to consider turfing. I am hoping that because of the lack of usage over the winter period, that actually grass cover is, is, is OK when we come back and play. And we'll be playing now over uh, during the growing season. So recovery after matches uh, should be better than, than usual. So hopefully, you know, once we come to the end of the season, pitches will actually be, uh, certainly grass cover wise, won't, won't be as bad as they would be having played all winter. Um, Fertilising could generally carry on as you normally would do. So applying a controlled release fertiliser in the springtime. As always, the fertilising uh, timing of the application is key, uh, particularly if you've not got any means of irrigation. So trying to plan applications to coincide with rainfall within a day or two of applying fertilizer um, and you may also want to think about leaving a few days between usage on the pitches so there's not granular fertilizer granules across the pitches so again that's working with you working with your clubs looking at your fixture list and trying to find the most appropriate window to, to do the work um, decompaction operations such as deep spiking can continue as usual in the spring soil conditions allowing um, don't want it to be too wet and we don't want it to be too dry, too hard and dry. So we can't get any, uh, any machinery in the ground. Um, I would probably advise against any sort of heavy mechanical scarification as this would need to take place at the end of the season. And the short turnaround time between seasons will leave very little time for the pitches then to recover. But we can look at some springtime raking or some chain harrowing during the next few weeks and months, which will, try, which will keep the surface clean. We'll pull out some of the annual meadow grass, which might start to build up over the, over the next few weeks. Um, just trying to think what other operations not covered. Um, so applying a weed killer. So for, any, uh, for those of you that have got trouble with weeds, um, as always, selective herbicide should be applied by fully qualified professionals and needs to be applied when the uh, plant is uh, actively growing. Um, a consideration for this would be around usually recommended not to mow three days before or three days after applying any weed killer. So obviously you need to take that into account with fixtures, et cetera, if that's potentially six days without the pitch being cut. So you need to factor that into your thinking in terms of bringing, uh, bringing the grass down to uh, match height. And around seeding as well, ideally uh, weed killer shouldn't be applied sort of six weeks either side of a of uh, any uh, grass seed being applied as well. And then just finally, um, sand dressing. So if you're looking at applying any sand dressings, um, I wouldn't look to apply any more than sort of 20 or 30 tons at a time because applying what we obviously don't want while um, play is sort of commencing is to be playing on a beach. So, and applying it on established turf can be a lot harder to work into the surface than, than sort of pre end of season renovations when you cut the grass down a lot, a lot shorter. So, um, and, and with lots of these things, you, you can almost split the renovations between now and September time. So you might look at doing a bit of seeding now, a bit of seeding in September, same with your, same with your top dressing. Um, so yeah, there's lots that still can be done to make sure your pitches are in the best condition for, for next season, but it, it just will need a bit of sort of flexibility and, and thinking really.
yeah, and thanks for that, Tom. That's really comprehensive um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, clubs will be playing during the season, you know, during the season in terms of, um, you know, when, when they will be actually kind of renovating. So I guess that advice is, is really useful for clubs. Um, if I can move on, because uh, we've got quite a few questions to kind of get through. Um, this is one for you, Chris. Uh, Lee mentioned in his uh, presentation around the, the allocation of funding. Uh, how, how, how do clubs know uh, how much funding uh, are they going to need to contribute to secure the, card, the grant from the foundation? Um, I know Lee mentioned about the different percentages of funding over the course period of the grant. Can you just explain that in a little bit more detail? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've created a, a calculator um, which has been sent to county FAs and will provide in the post-webinar comms um, that you'll receive. And what that calculator does basically is you can enter the uh, pitch information from your pitch power assessment report in terms of a uh, number of pitches that are good or better uh, and a uh, number of pitches that are below good. And what that calculator does is it works out the Football Foundation contribution for every year over the six year period and what the club contribution would be uh, required per year and over the six year period. You will notice that the, uh, the first two years are 100% funded by the Football Foundation. That's because we want to be as supportive as possible. Um, and some people on the chat have already mentioned uh, the impact of COVID. It's been a really challenging time. So that we want to be as flexible as we can be. Uh, and so the first two years of the fund uh, will be 100% covered by the Football Foundation. Okay, all right. So that's the first two years at 100%. But clubs need to be thinking about how they build up their their funding to fund the reduction in the in the grant as it tapers off. Yeah, it's a tapered tapered grant, so it's over six years, um, and every two years it it, it drops by basically thirty three percent. In the application form, the club uh, are asked to state where their um, their contribution might come from, bank account, fundraising, etc. Um, but like I say, we want to be as flexible as possible and give you time to to raise funds um, given the challenging time you face with COVID. Okay, that's really useful. And, and, and Chris, I noticed on the chat, there was uh, a few uh, mentions of parish councils and clubs using parish councils, schools and local authority sites. Can you just clarify in terms of who the applicant is and, and how you know those you know, clubs will go about accessing that funding? Yeah, there's been quite a few questions on that. Um, so basically the applicant needs to be um, the club um, or grassroots league and um, if you um, currently use parish council, town council, education establishments, local authority pitches, you can still access the funding but you'll need to get the agreement that was previously mentioned um, that county of A's have and that will be sent out after this webinar. You'll need to get that um, agreed and signed by the landowner um, and that will then be suitable security of tenure for this fund. Okay, that's a, and, and Chris, just another one which is coming in terms of um, a couple of the uh, clarification around kind of grants. Uh, one is, is, is in terms of you know, if a club has, has had pitch preparation funding or they've had a grant before for machinery or they want to apply for another capital grant, such as a small grant, uh, does this rule them ineligible in terms of funding or can they make those applications? Yes, yeah, so in the main it won't do. If you've received enhanced grass pitch maintenance funding that was uh, provided last year by the Football Foundation, you won't be eligible to apply for the same pitches for this funding. Um, if you've um, accessed um, or need access to uh, machinery, um, the small grants on the Football Foundation website, um, there is details and guidance on there. Um, and uh, again, depending on the situation with individual applications to the foundation, it wouldn't make you in, ineligible. Um, so yeah, I think there's, there's been quite a few um, questions around machinery, so just to cover that in a, a bit more detail. When you um, complete your pitch power um, inspection, you are asked to enter details on the maintenance machinery and equipment that um, you use on the site. That can be either um, machinery equipment that's owned by the club or used by an external contractor. 
the message here is the more information you can provide within pitch power, the better uh, your assessment uh, will be by the regional pitch advisor at the GMA. Okay. And, uh, sorry, and the, the recommendations within the pitch power assessment report will cover both uh, materials and maintenance practices and also machinery and what equipment uh, will be recommended by the RPA. That's what you will use um, for an application um, for uh, machinery and equipment through the Football Foundation. OK, and, and, and just just clarification on that, Chris, because we had a number of funds which supported clubs to return to football during the course of last year. Um, can you just explain the difference between the pitch preparation funding and, and the enhanced grass pitch maintenance funding? So if, if, if a club has had pitch preparation funding, can they apply for this funding? Yes, they can. So the pitch preparation funding was a COVID relief fund um, and it was one-off funding. So yes, if you've had pitch prep funding, um, then you are eligible and you can apply for uh, this uh, new fund. Um, enhanced Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund was a similar fund to what you've um, been presented tonight. Um, so if you've had Enhanced Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund, which is a six-year fund, um, that was launched last year, you won't be eligible um, to access this new funding um, for pitches that you've had enhanced grass pitch maintenance funding for previously. Okay, and, and, and just, a, just a, a further question on that in terms of uh, and maintenance and maintenance machinery, Chris, how, how's that decided? Do we just leave clubs to, to, to you know, choose their own machinery? No, so in, in the um, pitch power assessment report, you will have recommendations from your regional pitch advisor on what equipment and machinery is suitable uh, for your pitches on your site. So you'll be given uh, as much information uh, around uh, the type of equipment, type of machinery, specification, etc. And then if you are looking to apply to the Football Foundation for uh, machinery and equipment, then you will need to get two uh, quotes um, for that machinery that's being recommended. Um, and enter those into the application form. Okay, okay, that's that's great. And, and, and just before just before I move on to Tom, because I've got a couple of questions for, for Tom, which have come through the, the chat. Um, just just in terms of can can a if a club uses more than one site, uh, so they're a big club, so can they make an application for individual sites? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So it's um, a club can make numerous applications if they use numerous sites, but each application would need to be specific to that site. So you'll need to use pitch power on all of your sites and you will get a pitch power assessment report and an ID for each of those sites. That is what you will use within the application form for each individual application. Um, and sorry, Mark, I'm just gonna, um, there's a really good question come through um, from Stuart around pitch power. Um, the question is, pitch power says you need to assess a minimum of six pitches if you have 10 pitches at a site. If you only assess six on pitch power, does that mean that you can only get funding for six pitches? Or do you need to submit assessments for all 10 in order to get funding for all 10? It's a great question. So in pitch power, um, there is um, some, some messaging um, around multiple pitch sites. And that messaging is around if you have a site with um, seven or more pitches, you, you're only required to do um, X percentage of those pitches. The message needs to be really clear for anybody that wants to access this fund. If you want to access the funding then you for the, all the pitches on your site, then you need to complete pitch power for all of the pitches on your site. So in that example from Stuart, Stuart, you would need to um, use pitch power on all 10 pitches on your site to apply for the funding for 10 pitches. Okay, um, from, from, thank you very much for, for that. Um, question uh, for you, Tom, uh, around the groundskeepers community. We've had a few questions tonight, and, and I know Chris put the, the link up to the, the community earlier on. Can you explain a little bit more about the, the community and how it works? Yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, the, the Football Foundation groundskeeping community, um, it was developed in partnership with the uh, FA Football Foundation and the GMA. Um, so it was launched, I think it was August 2019 it was launched. And 
we've currently got around 2,300 um, users. So um, it's sort of got two functions, really. One is to act as a, as a community for those that are looking after pitches um, at, at various levels. But I would probably say 70 to 80% of the people on there are either involved in grassroots clubs, um, directly looking after pitches or are involved as coaches, et cetera. And um, so we've also got the regional pitch advisors on there. We've got some programmesmen on there. So um, Carl from Wembley uh, often pops up and, and offers some advice. And it, it's really an area to sort of um, share good practice with peers, um, get advice, hints and tips. And, and we do see a lot of that. And what's really good to see is when it first launched, there was a lot of questions and they were being answered by our team and other professionals but actually now we're seeing the the grassroots community are helping each other out with tips and advice and you know sharing pictures and and, and that sort of stuff and, and it's it's a it's a really sort of open forum there's, there's sort of no stupid questions there's um there's no agenda in there everybody's really really helpful on there and um yeah we've been really really pleased with the way it's it, it's uh, sort of operated since it was launched and the, the other aspect to it is as sort of an information uh, library or, or whatever you want to call it we've got um <clears throat> we've got cards on various different topics so whether it's decompaction fertilizing whether it's what machinery you should be using there's a a monthly a month by month breakdown of of operations and considerations for, for each month throughout the year um there's quite a bit of video footage on there there's you know as, as lee mentioned earlier there's the um there's information around the extension of the football season and how that might affect your pitches. Um, yeah, so it's a really good um, platform and resource for anyone out there who's looking after pitches or just wants a bit more information on on pitches. And it's footballfoundation.hivelearning.com and it's just simply sign up with your email address and the password and, uh, and, and away you go, basically. I think I saw Chris post the link earlier on in the at the start of the, the webinar. Tom, just a couple of questions more if I can, if I can ask you. Um, what, what's the difference between using a liquid fertilizer and a granular fertilizer? Um, well, gen, gen, generally, um, liquid fertilizers are more sort of short-term, quick response. Um, so they usually go hand in hand quite well together. Um, so, a, a, a sort of a granular fertilizer is more usually more of a base feed slow release so um it's applied to the surface and the nutrients are the nutrients become available to the plant over a longer period of time with a uh with a with a liquid feed they are sprayed onto the turf and ideally um watered into the soil and taken up by the roots but quite often they're taken in through the leaf um, so a good way of using them is to have a granular feed as a base feed and then you can top up with your liquid fertilizer so particularly you know if you've got a if you've got a big match coming up or a final or that sort of stuff it can it gives that sort of instant green up um but what what it what you will find is a challenge it will give instant flushes of so a liquid fertilizer will give those flushes of growth which we can quite difficult to keep up with if you're a grassroots volunteer and you've only got a couple of hours a week to to get down the ground and cut the pitches and and also with those flushes of growth can bring uh, certain diseases as well. So, yeah, generally, I think for grassroots, I'd always be a, a sort of recommending a granular slow release because it, it does give a more of a balanced release of, of nutrients over time. It doesn't give those flushes of growth um, and it's just a, a bit more balanced, but they do work very well together. But the key is both of them really ideally need to be watered in. So just because one's a liquid feed, it, it doesn't mean that you don't need that uh, that rainfall afterwards or, or that irrigation. Sure. Thanks for that, Tom. There's another question which has come in, which I'd like to ask you. Um, the, the use of kind of disc seeding. Um, I think this club has got to worry that they're going to disseed in, in early April. Uh, when football gets back and, and gets back playing, uh, and they're, they're kind of slightly concerned they won't be able to achieve the results they wanted to or they want to because there'll be more play on the pitches. What would you advise that club? Yeah, well, I think what I'd, 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 I'd probably have a look at what the grass cover is like and, and, and how bad or good it is before making a call. But, but as I said, it's 
it's better to do it now than to wait to the end of the season because of the the lack of rainfall and the heat. What the drill seeder will do, it it will drop the seed in the ground, probably at least three millimetres into the ground, probably deeper. So making sure when your contractor does come or whoever's doing it, make sure the machine is set to the to the deepest it will go. It will take, it, it could take up to 10 days or so for the um, for the, the seed to sort of start to chit and for the roots to, uh, and for it to sort to start to germinate, et cetera. So it will be, it will be protected for, for a period of time. Um, and the, the deeper it's set in the ground, uh, the better chance of it's got of establishing that root and getting a bit more stability. There is a risk it, it will get kicked out, but it's, it's less of a risk than waiting to the end of the season and, putting some seed in the ground and it just doing nothing what you could do is you could seed at half rate so if you're planning at seeding say 40 grams per square meter you could seed at say 20 grams per square meter now and do another 20 grams per square meter in september so you could you could split it um that way to try and get um to try and maximise the, uh, the the effect that the, the seeding can have, but but generally, I think because we are in obviously now coming into you know the growing season, etc., we should see it established fairly quickly and take root and, and hopefully uh, you yeah, know be stable enough to for the majority of it to be um, to be successful. Okay, that's that's great. I've got a couple more questions in the moment uh, for you, Tom, but I'll, I'll go over to Chris. And um, Chris, just some kind of questions being asked on the on the chat around. Um, if a club receives and accepts a grant, you know, do they get that grant all up front? Do they get it annually? How's that kind of worked out? And what information, you know, do they need to submit as part of, of as part of the, the application or the, the process in terms of in order to get the grant? Yeah, great question. So the funding's provided up front. So once you've been successful with your application, you'll um, be offered the year one grant up front, which will be paid in full to you. What you then do is on the anniversary of that grant being offered in one year's time, um, you can submit a claim. And with that claim, you need to submit uh, evidence of uh, the spend, uh, eligible spend um, as per your pitch power assessment report. And if you provide claims and evidence of the, uh, the full year one grant, you will be given your full year two grant um, to spend uh, in year two um, on the recommendations based within your pitch power assessment report. Right, okay, that's, that's really useful to know. And, and then Tom, question has, has been asked about how, you, how uh, clubs act, access the, the online GMA level one, level two courses. Can you elaborate on that a bit further? Uh, yes, so um, the GMA Level 1 online is uh, is a requirement of the machinery grant and also the grass pitch uh, maintenance fund. Um, so if you head to our, you head to our website and um, you select the learning tab um, and basically you'll find it in there. So that the online courses uh, and generally um, they are priced around, I think it's 25 to 35 pound for the Level 1 and takes between sort of four to eight hours of um, sort of studying time to complete. And there's a there's an assessment that comes um, at the end of it. And you've got 28 days to, to do it as well. So we've, we've seen um, uh, we've seen the uptake of it's been fantastic. Certainly the, the football one has had over a thousand people sign up and use it since it was launched back in May last year. And feedback on it has been uh, has, has been really good. So, um, so yeah, I'd, I'd certainly recommend as a, as a starting place to get a little bit of information is a really good place to start. And as I said, it is a it is a uh, requirement of a, of a couple of the foundation grants as well. I'll um, I'll try and find the uh, the direct link for it and I'll stick it in the chat. Okay, that that'd be great. And um, Chris, just a, a couple of questions here. I know you've been busy answering stuff on the the chat. I think Lee went through this in this presentation, but I'll ask it in anyway. Um, from when a club fills out and submits their pitch power uh, assessments, how long does it take to, to get a completed report back? You're on mute, Chris. Mute, Chris. <laughs> Sorry. We, um, we do tell you within the app, uh, currently it's 21 days from submission of your uh, inspection data through to receiving the pitch power assessment report. Right. Okay. And, and, oh, sorry, Mark. Having, yeah. said, having said that, um, the the RPAs do get them out 
um, sooner, um, but not wanting to put any pressure on them. The time scale that we're given in the, the app currently is 21 days. Right, okay, no, that, that's great. And, and, and just in the, the application process, do, do clubs need to go out and get quotes, you know, in, in terms of for that, for that work, for those recommendations? How, how does that work in terms of calculating the potential grant, Chris? Yeah, so no, you don't. So um, within the application form, once you um, enter your pitch power assessment report ID, the funding levels are pulled, <coughs> excuse me, pulled through automatically based on your um, performance quality standards of your pitch. Um, so you don't, you're not required to have any tenders, uh, any quotes, et cetera, within the application form. What will then happen is um, you'll then be offered the grant based on the, uh, the funding that's pulled through in the application form. And once you accept the grant and go out and tender or procure the works, um, you will then need in a year's time to submit the evidence of that work um, through invoices, et cetera. Okay. And uh, there's a couple of final ones really before we, we wrap up. And I'll just give everybody around about 30 seconds to ask any last questions in the, the chat, which we can pick up. I've got a, a couple of questions for you. One of the questions was around a, a school site, Chris. Uh, who is the, if a club has got an agreement or they want to get an agreement with a, a school site, do they do that directly with the school or do they do that directly with the local authority in, in, in terms of that? What, what yeah, it's a, it's a good question because um, schools and education establishments are governed in numerous different ways. The first action would be to speak to the school. It might be that it's an academy trust you need to get the agreement from. It might be that it's a diocese. It might be that it's the school itself. It might be the local authority. Um, it would depend on um, the governance of that school. So the first step with that would be to speak to the school itself. Right, okay. So whether they're an academy or they're a maintained school would be different in terms of the route uh, clubs would need to make that approach to. And, and, and obviously in terms of the grant is given over a period of, of six years, Chris, uh, what happens if the price goes up in, in later years from, from kind of contractors? Can our club labels apply for extra money? No, so it's the payment schedule is as per what is offered when um, the grant offer is made. Um, so, yeah, if, if prices increase, there, there wouldn't be additional funding from the foundation uh, and there wouldn't be an additional application form. The payment schedule is set out um, as per when um, the grant offer is made. Um, once the assessment of your application is made. Right, okay. And uh, just, just, just two final questions, really, from, from me. They will probably uh, go to, to yourself, I think, Chris, unless anything else pops into the, the, the chat. Um, questions asked, on, on what basis was the £2,500 set? Uh, particularly, you know, as sand and, and you know, sand and materials can cost a lot of money, um, you know, and might not leave any money for any other work. Yeah, so we, um, Lee mentioned the pilot that we did uh, in the Wirral, um, and as part of that pilot, we researched costs. Um, and I think it was 1,800. Um, that was the price that, that Lee quoted in terms of that pilot and that research. We've also um, sought advice and guidance from the GMA in terms of what is uh, a suitable annual um, budget to, one, get pitches up to a good standard, and secondly, to maintain them at a good standard and through that consultation, research, and uh, pilots and user testing, they're the figures that um, we're using. Right, okay. And, and, and just the, the, the last question which has popped in before we, we bring, bring it to a close, I'm conscious that England are about to kick off if they haven't already. Uh, what, would the school be responsible for the payments to a contractor, or, or would that be a club on an education site? Yeah, so the, the club, would be the applicant to the football foundation um, and the club in the agreement that you would have with the school. The agreement has been shared with the county affairs and will be sent out after this webinar. Um, it's for additional maintenance. So it would be the applicant, it would be the club that would be responsible for um, working through um, those works with the contractor. Um, but obviously the, the school would likely be involved given it's their land as well. But it would be the club that is responsible for um, the grant and responsible for um, the claims, etc., cetera, um, through the Football Foundation. Okay, okay. Uh, I think that's probably all on the, on the chats. Uh, 
So what I'm going to do is I'll bring the, the webinar to a close. Uh, we might not have covered every single question uh, on the chat, but what we aim to do is uh, we'll, we'll aim to, to make sure that we issue a Q&A paper after the chat so you'll receive that with any further kind of questions on there with answers to them. Uh, I'd like to thank Lee for, for presenting. I'd like to thank again Tom and Chris for providing the answers posed tonight by the, the chat. Um, with the return of football fast approaching, the Football Foundation has launched the Game On campaign with three different funds to get you ready for the big kickoff. The Grass Pitch Maintenance Fund is one of these funds is available uh, as part of the Game On campaign, but you may be eligible to apply for the Return to Football Fund or a small grant to support your club. More information can be found on the Football Foundation's website and will be shared with you after the webinar. You will also receive a follow-up from the Foundation with regards to this webinar. As I mentioned just a moment ago, the Q&A paper will be circulated to you. A recording of this evening's webinar will also be available for you, along with the presentation slides. Uh, and we are going to also circulate the various links uh, available uh, you know, to you so you are able to access uh, the Pitch Power app, you're able to access the groundskeepers community and also the GMA, uh, the GMA uh, training courses. Um, so that will all be circulated for you after, after, the, uh, after the webinar. Lastly, can I thank you for your attendance? Hopefully you found the webinar beneficial and, and look forward to submitting your application for funding and accessing uh, the various uh, tools and uh, our online groundskeepers community to get our advice and tips from our volunteer groundskeepers and professionals within the industry. On behalf of us all, thank you uh, for thank you and good evening.